this topic, we will discuss the factors that complete the communication cycle. All these factors, used with all the others learned so far, can be used to enhance and develop yourself as a good communicator. Pay attention. Focus on what the speaker is saying. Listen to understand rather than reply. Look for nonverbal cues and watch, look and evaluate. Good listeners reply with short phrases during conversation and or presentation. Like, yes, I understand. Tell me more. Ask questions. If a client is in a hurry and or angry, adjust your tone and pace quickly to indicate that you know he or she is in a hurry or lower your tone to calm the client down. Often when working with clients, not all information is revealed during the conversation or communication. It may be necessary to ask additional questions. Asking questions promotes interaction and helps clarify client understanding. However, we need to be able to differentiate between the different types of questions to know which to ask and or, of course, to help us answer. If we have a look at open-ended questions, these are questions that allow the person to give us more information. Closed questions, on the other hand, require just a simple yes or no answer. Elaborative questions, questions that ask the client to elaborate why, what, questions like that. Leading questions. What would you rather have me do, sir? Okay, leading the person to give you a reply. And then a multiple of the open, closed, elaboration or leading questions in order to get what you need. Communicating with a client is formal. Thus, it is important to know and use terminology that is understood. The milium citande et executandi means an address nominated by a party in a contract and is used in law. It is important to adjust yourself to the client's level and or even assist in understanding and or asking questions to fully understand what is being communicated. Put yourself in that person's position. How would you feel if you were asked that question or asked for the domicilium? Okay, things we cannot even pronounce. All right, so make sure that we use the correct terminology. Describe relevant options if necessary. Then research consensus. Outline procedures if necessary and record the details. Follow updates, action plans, feedback required, any important information relevant to the conversation. The process of communication with a client is as follows. We greet the client. Determine the client's needs by using questioning techniques. Check the requirements against the procedures and obviously organizational policies. Confirm the course of action with the client and then close the conversation. Remember, have follow-up actions if they're necessary, have action plans, provide dates, provide times, um, when the follow-up will occur, all that sort of thing will make a difference in terms of the communication and the experience of the service that the client receives. And that's a wrap for topic six. Now I'm sure you're well on your way already to becoming a good communicator and that you've taken all these skills and tips um, into consideration. Let's take a look at what we've learned throughout this topic. Listen to a message to understand rather than think about what you're going to reply before the message has even been communicated. Use questioning to gather additional information. Don't use technical terms with a client and or an individual who is not familiar with the terms. The process of communicating provides an efficient guideline to ensure that communication is done and or understood effectively.